With the release of PB2, all of the original 45 alluvials from PB1 have been updated in some shape or form, whether it be omegas, basic stats, animations, or sound effects. While some of our favorites have inevitably been nuked, others have faced huge overhauls. Let's review. For the likes of Atlas, Axon, and Axton, the team felt as though they were struggling to fulfill their role as bulwarks as well as scions. In an effort to fix this, the team has added Omega Power Scaling to their max health components, upped each unit's physical resist by 10 points, and decreased Axodon's total attack damage from 95 to 85. When it comes to Ramphy, Ramphite, and Ramfire, there are no better eyes in the sky. As the characters have continued to evolve, it's become more evident that the group is a bit disjointed with the Slayer class. In an effort to match the class with its overwhelming Omega playstyle, the Ultimate class has been switched from Slayer to Phantom. Along with the class change, the line overall has seen a decrease in attack damage, while Ramfight and Ramfire will go into PB2 with a decrease in max health as well. Ripter, Ripterus, and Ryplants are your typical fighter class. Other than an affinity name change from Poison to Toxic, the only other notable change are a reduced energy cost of its Omega and Ripe Plants' energy resist rising from 25 to 30. It should come as no surprise that the likes of Archie, Archos, and Archillion were massively overperforming. Because of this, the line's Omega has been toned down. While the Omega might not be as powerful, its area of effect has been increased, and damage and root effect has been added across all stages, making Archie and Archos more reliable and easier to use effectively. Dash, Rake, and Umber all seem to struggle with reliability due to the amount of time it would take the unit's Omega to go off. In an effort to balance the units better, the team has reduced the Omega's duration, added attack damage scaling, and normalized all stages to hit two targets. The Lion's class has also been switched from Phantom to Slayer, helping to add a more balanced gameplay experience. Vermi, Vermilia, and Vermiliere had a number of issues, the main one being that an Empath Rogue was dealing too much damage while also being too tanky for its own good. The Omega has been reworked and now provides more conditional tankiness in the form of dodge and debuffs enemy Omega power in a large area of effect. Scarabok, Goliant, and Titanor have remained largely unchanged, but has lost the stacking bonuses on its Omega, which often made the beast unkillable. Kuka and the rest of its line remains perfect and largely unchanged, with the exception of minor increases to total attack damage and decreases to attack speed. While the likes of Flare, Singe, and Seer were performing admirably as tanks, the line didn't come across as much of a fighter. The team has added attack damage scaling to its Omega and tweaked its stats in an effort to fix the issue. Alfie, Sinalp, and Duluth struggled and in the early stages the Omega didn't feel as though it was powerful enough as a focused carry. Due to the nature of the Lion's Omega, the problem couldn't be fixed with numbers alone. Rather than just increasing the numbers of the early stages, the Lion's Omega has been tweaked to be blockable while also massively increasing its numbers. Now the Omega will shred through targets, only hitting the next one after the first one has been defeated. To help accomplish this, the Omega duration has been increased from 0.8 seconds to 4.2, allowing the players to really feel the impact while also increasing the opportunity to have its Omega disrupted. Most of the changes you'll see for Fern, Fernite, and Blazonite was aimed at making its Omega more interesting and nuanced. The Omega now stuns and debuffs enemies, while also buffing allies. The energy cost has also been reduced, allowing for more frequent Omegas. We all know that the Adore line was the tank that shouldn't have existed. As a healer, the unit should have been able to be knocked down in burst. Instead, it became the unit that everyone just ignored. In an effort to fix this, the automatic self-targeting of its Omega has been removed and now the unit will only heal itself if it is one of the lowest health units. While this should help somewhat, the team understands that this won't necessarily fix the issues completely and will address the issue more thoroughly with a future base stat patch update. Laura, Lolora, and Mullora 
are recipients of the new plane change mechanic. Now when this line casts its omega, they'll gain underground. This allows the line to only be affected by abilities that can target the ground, which at this time is pretty much nothing. The line has also had their stun upgraded to charm, forcing the opposing unit to move toward the charmer, allowing for more reliable and disruptive omega. Fiery, Virox, and Scoriox had an omega that wasn't particularly clear or exciting. In an effort to jazz things up, the team has changed the Omega to provide an attack speed buff and cause its attacks to explode in an area around the intended target. The biggest issues users saw when using Tatapi, TNT, and Seaforus was the unreliability of its targeting with its Omega. This issue has been addressed and has resulted in the higher stages being utter monsters on the field. As a result, the number of projectiles for Seaforus has been decreased while Tatapi has gained damage reduction during its Omega to better match its Earth identity. Thanks for joining us for this rundown of the PB2 patch notes. If you want to stay up to date on the PB3 patch notes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the flip side.